Hey everyone, Jacob here from Painted for Combat, and over my last few videos I've shown off a bunch of processes, tips, tricks and settings to help you more easily print better miniatures on FDM printers. But what does all of this actually look like in practice? How do I actually print my FDM miniatures? Well, today I'm going to be printing up this Hellgate Demon Brute by Arbiture Miniatures, and I figured I might as well take you along for the ride. To give you some insights into my thought process during the printing, and just to show you generally what my process is for printing an FDM miniature. And to that effect, I'll leave the link to this model down below, just in case you want to download it for yourself and actually follow along with me here today. And if you do find this follow along style tutorial helpful, let me know down below and maybe I'll do a few more follow ups in the future, looking at some different models that each have different challenges for FDM printing, and showing you my process and how I overcome those challenges to get these models on the print bed. Today I'm going to be printing this model on the Bamboo Lab A1 using Bamboo Basic PLA, with a 0.2mm nozzle, which is an absolute must have for FDM printing miniatures. As I often do, I'm going to be using my Painted for Combat 0.08mm profile in Orca Slicer. If you want to get your hands on this printer profile for just a couple of bucks you can do so from my Patreon down below, but if you're not able to support the channel through Patreon, then a great alternative is to download Fat Dragon Games' free printer profile for this printer, and just add in the support settings that you'll see on screen while I'm slicing the model. With all that out of the way, now that you know what model we're going to be printing today, and the hardware and software I'll be using to do so, let's jump over to the computer and get this model ready to print. Alright, so I've just gone ahead and jumped over to Orca Slicer, and imported the model that we're going to be printing here today. As I showed you before, this is a Demon Brute by Arbiture Miniatures, and now that we have it in our slicer, we can start to get a bit of a better feel for how this is actually going to print up. We're starting to see some overhangs and flat surfaces that are going to kind of inform how we're going to slice this model. Taking a look at this miniature, we can see that there's a lot of nice, large details and chunky overhangs that should be pretty easy to print on an FDM machine, especially compared to other more delicate miniatures. Taking a look around this model, I do think that we're going to be best off just printing it in this default orientation where we have some nice flat surfaces for good bed adhesion. And also in this orientation for this miniature that's a little bit larger and has slightly bigger details, I also think we're going to get away with FDM tree supports. Taking a bit of a closer look at this model, I think the main pain points for supporting it are going to be these chin spikes here that are standing straight up and down, the loincloth here which the base is going to need a little bit of extra support, and these purely vertical spikes on a couple of the wing pieces here. Overall though, this model looks reasonably FDM friendly. The overhangs themselves are going to be easy enough to support with some nice big tree supports. We don't have too many tiny little details that are going to snap or cause issues during printing. And a lot of these chunkier details, much like many of Arbiture Miniatures minis, are going to print great on an FDM machine. The only issue that we might run into is potentially this chain. But even so, I think that this model is probably large enough in scale that that chain is going to print up just fine. But if that causes a problem later, we can probably come back and look at a different supporting option for this mini. But for now, given that we're going to keep this in the default orientation, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some supports. First up, what I normally do when I'm supporting a model is just let the auto supports run and see what the results are looking like, because sometimes we can salvage the auto supports and just kind of eliminate support material in places rather than having to paint it all on manually. But for a model like this that does have quite a few overhangs, we might see a lot of support material that doesn't actually need to be there, and it's just going to be a pain to remove later. So we'll kind of have to do a bit of a balancing act here to see whether we're just removing supports or whether we paint them all in manually from scratch. Okay, yeah, so here's what I was talking about earlier. We have some great bed adhesion with the bottom of this miniature here, having some nice flat faces to sit on the build plate. Supports themselves seem to be doing a pretty good job up until this point. I do think the bottom of the shield here might need a little bit of extra attention just to make sure that it doesn't get to here and then get knocked off this little bit of support material that it has at the bottom. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the supports around these loincloths. We want them to be well supported, but not to the point that they're fully encased in material and we can't actually remove those supports after printing. So we'll just have to keep an eye on those. What I'm looking for here is just all of these little overhanging details, just making sure that they actually have some support to cling on to, making sure that any little details like this are getting picked up by the supports, and that there is enough support material under larger pieces like this arm here that these flat rings are going to actually be able to print and connect with the model. Overall this arm's looking good, uh, apart from I think yeah, that shield's going to need a bit more, but other than that, that arm's pretty good. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to do something about this chain. We're probably gonna have to do manual supports, at least in that area. These loincloths aren't bad, but I do think I'll probably manually support some of these areas. 
And you want to keep an eye out for areas like this where it's attempting to print flat faces on support materials like this. The edges can kind of curl up and cause some issues in the print. The fact that it's only three or four layers here, it should be all right. Yeah, these chin spikes are going to need a bit of attention because the bottom of the head is going to be a bit difficult to remove as it is with the default supports. Otherwise, that all seems pretty good. I think we're going to stick with auto support generation, but just go in and manually touch up a few areas. Areas like this chain here, like the face and the loincloth that we were kind of highlighting needed some changes. So to do that, I'm going to go out of our preview here, back into the prepare tab, click on our model and go into the support painting mode. Now for areas like this shield here, where I don't necessarily want to take away any of those areas that were auto supported, I'll just grab our sphere brush here and just add in a little bit of support material just by left clicking. Just saying that we want supports on all of these areas here and maybe a little bit on the back just so that it's well supported during that initial print. Uh, we wanted a little bit extra over here, I think, on this wing spike, just to make sure that it doesn't cause issues. Now, for this chain, I want to manually support this area. Because we're using auto supports for most of this model, I first need to tell the slicer not to generate supports on this area at all, and then to come in and manually tell it where I want those supports to be placed. So, with the support painting active, I'm going to right click here, and just drag down and that right click will tell it not to generate supports any of these areas that I've just painted in red. So I'll even go all the way up the hand here just because I think it was getting confused the whole way up the model. Decrease my pen size back down and now I can just go through and again left click to paint in the areas where I do want supports in these red parts. Now I'm just going to be pretty selective with this. You can use the highlight overhangs feature here to see angles beneath anywhere kind of within that 30 range is where you want to be supporting. So. Just making sure to only hit the areas that are going to need it. Now we've probably actually already supported all of the critical areas that need it on this chain. However, I am going to add a little bit more in up the length of the chain. Just because if the tool head continued to move up and keep printing this, chances are a thin piece of material like this unsupported would just keep kind of wobbling around layer to layer and we'd see a not so nice looking print and a bit of layer shifting happening here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that there's at least a little bit of support the whole way up the model just to hold it nicely in place and make sure that we're getting a good quality print and grabbing any more of these critical regions here that have a bit of a highlight on them. Making sure that we're getting kind of the minimum amount of support material so that it's easy to remove later but making sure that we are at least supporting all the areas that are going to need it and let's slice that up and see what it's looking like. So again, so far we've only done the shield, the wings, and the chain here. We still need to focus on the face and the loincloths, but it's good to check as you go rather than doing everything at once and hoping that you remember to check everything that you've done. All right, there we go. Yeah, so that chain is looking much cleaner. If you remember before, it was kind of getting encased in material. We were seeing little wispy bits kind of around the edges. This is going to be much easier to remove, but it's still going to easily hold that in place for the print. Our shield here, same thing. We're seeing way better support down the bottom here. There's no way that that's going to get pulled off the print bed. Little pieces like this here, where we're seeing supports coming up. I think we can probably come in and paint that area red because I don't actually think that support needs to be there. I think this whole arm is looking pretty good now. I think we kind of nailed that first try. How are the wings looking now? Yeah, that's feeling a bit better over there. Pretty good so far here on the chain, the shield, and the wings. So we can just come in and take a look at the face and the loincloth areas. So I reckon I'm going to do the same thing here that I did on the chain and just kind of block out the face completely and then do my own supports for this area. Obviously these are going to need a fair amount. Just going to do like a single line up here I think. Maybe a little bit down some of these edges. Now we want to make sure that these print up well and that we can still remove the supports. So I'm probably just going to paint support up the back of these so that the front piece here is at least still exposed. Put a little bit of support here and here. Now I know that there's some highlighted bits here in the cheeks and in the eyebrow, but I think I'm going to slice it like that and see how it's looking. And before we slice, I think I'll just come in and, as I mentioned before, eliminate the support on that area. All right, that's looking much cleaner now. Taking a bit of a look here. We can at least see the full face now. These should peel away nicely after the print. You can see here we are getting a couple of tiny little blue dots which is just highlighting where there's some quite steep overhanging areas but again these are so minuscule that if there is any blemish they'll come right out with a quick sand or a pass of the hobby knife. 
Okay, so much like the other areas, I'm going to block off these areas for supports because we were seeing a bunch of unnecessary support being generated up the face, which is going to leave some nasty marks and make it hard to remove later on. So with stuff like these loincloths, I like to make sure that the front face is printing nice and clean, that the bottom is supported, and if it needs any additional support, I'll put some lines up the back to hold it in place. So let's go through and do that now. Just drop our size down here. Essentially paint along these bottom areas that are going to need support material. Do the same on the back. But as I mentioned before, I still want to give this a bit of extra rigidity. Kind of like we did with the shield here, where we gave it some extra support. Even though the main areas were supported, just to make sure that they don't wiggle or get snapped free during the print. And rather than putting that like up here, let's say on the faces that we're going to be seeing, the areas that we're going to want to paint later, what we can do is actually put that on the inside of the model where it's going to be a bit less visible. And just adding a few additional bits of support material up the back. And I'll do the same on this other piece as well. Just adding in a couple of extra lines to make sure that that is supported until it connects to the main model at the top. Let's go ahead and give it another slice. Okay, so on our loincloths, all of our bottom faces are now supported, as they were before, but we're no longer seeing these support towers crawling up the front of these loincloths, which will connect to the model and leave scarring after the print. Overall, I think that's looking pretty good. So, that's looking great. I'm not seeing anywhere that is under-supported or over-supported. There's no critical overhangs or sharp, steep angles that don't have support material where it's needed. And I'm not seeing any parts that look under-supported to the point that they'll get knocked off the print bed or torn away from the model during the print. Alright, I reckon this model is ready for the printer. Of course, if we have any print failures, supports that snap, or areas that come off the build plate, I'll absolutely make sure to keep you up to date and kind of show you the process of how I go about fixing that after the fact. But unless something disastrous does happen, I'll see you at the hobby table in a moment. And this print came out looking great. Obviously we can't say for sure until we get all the supports off and clean up the model, but we don't appear to have any glaring print failures or ugly looking printer artifacts. However, if you are interested in how I might have gone about resupporting this model if the supports had failed on an area like the chain, you can check out the video up in the card and down in the description below, where I look at using resin style pre-supports for FDM printing more delicate miniatures. But for now, let's get this miniature over to the hobby table, remove the supports, and get this demon brute all cleaned up. Upon closer inspection, we're seeing some great smooth surfaces on the weapon, great detail being captured up the chain and in the face, and the only real blemish that I'm seeing at the moment is that the tip of his little tail seems a little under-supported, but that should clean up just fine. For support removal and model cleanup, I tend to keep my toolbox pretty simple. A pair of cheap hobby nippers, don't use your nice ones on FDM prints, a hobby knife or exacto blade, and sometimes a nail file, just to smooth out rough overhangs. And there is one more tool that will come in handy later, but we'll cover that more when we get to it. Before we move on, if you do like what you're seeing here and want to help support the channel, the Patreon is the single best way to do so. As mentioned before, for just a couple of bucks you can get access to the amazing Painted for Combat Community Discord, my various printer profiles, and resin to FDM Advanced for Blender. Or at any of the higher STL tiers, you can get access to awesome monthly bases. Much like this month's release, the Cursed Swamps. Awesome marshland grass bases that come either pre-made with various mushrooms, or plain so that you can print and add the mushrooms separately, meaning no two bases will ever need to look the same. Or you can leave the mushrooms out entirely for a lush lakeside meadow basing scheme. Sculpted by me and designed in a way to print on FDM printers with no supports required, as either full bases or just toppers, and will take great to a dry brush on all of those grassy details. And an extra special thank you to my Painted for Display tier members, including our newest member to this tier, Joltman74, a very active part of this community who's always helping someone out over on the Painted for Combat Discord, and now with a badge that will forever be joining the display shelf. Thank you so much for your support and for being such an active member of this community. Alright, let's get back to it. Generally speaking, when it comes to support removal, you'll see me doing one of two things to disconnect these tree supports. Firstly, and most commonly, I will grab the support a few millimetres from where it connects to the model, 
and use a twisting motion to peel them away from the Mini. You want to avoid pulling straight down on a support that's connected to a delicate part of the model. Peeling the supports away makes sure that you're only applying tension to the support material itself, and not the often much more delicate miniature underneath. Though sometimes, where you have a large cluster of supports that are connected to a big chunk of the main model, you have no choice but to just pull those free. The second way in which I remove support material, and this is usually for smaller details that are clinging a bit tighter to them, is to place your nippers just beneath the last couple layers of support interface and squeeze, to essentially pop the edges of the supports away from the model, and this works great for small details. I did have a couple of small details lost during support removal. Both of the wing nubs lost the small downwards facing spikes that got stuck in the support material, but this is such a minor detail that I don't mind just cleaning them up a bit with some sanding and calling it good to go. For a detail that small, especially on an area that isn't a focal point of the model, it really isn't worth reprinting the mini for such a small detail, at least in my eyes. For support removal, I'll first do a pass with the knife, scraping away any remaining support interface to reveal the miniature beneath. Then I cut away any of the small gnarly looking overhangs, and use the knife at a 45 degree angle to scrape and smooth out some of those bottom surfaces that were connected to the supports. I also use this blade, pushing straight down in areas, to nick off any small blobs or drooping details that can occasionally form on small overhangs. Unfortunately I did manage to snap the thinner leg during cleanup, as I was holding the model in a not so great way, putting pressure on this thin area. Luckily PLA is pretty resilient, and as usual it held the snapped part partially in place, and broke cleanly on a layer, so it was a simple matter of adding a drop of superglue and realigning the leg. Then a once over with a sanding stick or nail file, which I used to just smooth out some of the more offensive areas, such as the underside of the head and the horns. I also used the file to smooth out those broken spikes on the wings, to make them look a bit more naturally rounded to fit in with the rest of the model. And now for that last tool that I mentioned, which as many of you might have guessed is a simple lighter, but really you can use anything that produces a small flame or enough heat, something like this lighter, a kitchen burner, or a heat gun, all of which do the same job just fine. And I use this to hit any of the little wisps or strings of material that are left on the model when the printer moves during the print. Generally speaking, with a nice light lick of a flame, the stringing will just disappear after a good once over on the model. And just like that, from slicer to printer and across the hobby table, we have a great looking FDM miniature ready for some primer and paint. considering a couple of follow-up videos using this model. One where I showcase my favourite ways to prime FDM minis, and one where I'm actually painting up this model. So let me know down below if you're interested in seeing those videos here on the channel soon. Like if you liked, and subscribe to stay up to date with some of the awesome projects that I have planned here on the channel. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.